Hey, a friend, Chris here from WideLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Let me ask you, do you like to use third-party loops and samples for your projects? You like to keep them stowed away on an external drive so they're not taking up space on your Mac's internal drive, but wouldn't you like to be able to preview those loops alongside your project at the same exact tempo? And once you find the loop that you're looking for, just drag it on in and have it import and conform to the project tempo once again. Well, you can do all of this. You can keep your loops and samples stowed away on that separate drive, preview at the project tempo, import it at the project tempo without taking up any space on your Mac's internal drive using untagged loops. So let me show you how to do that right now. Right, so on screen, I have one of the included demo projects that comes with Logic Pro. It's the Selection Live Loops Grid. If we reveal the Live Loops Grid side by side with the tracks area, you can see I just drag the cells into the tracks area. But let's assume that this is a project that I've been working on and I wanna see, do I have a loop on an external drive that might be a good fit for the project? What well, we can easily look across our Mac system using the project browser. I'm gonna press F on my Mac's keyboard to open the browser, but of course you could go right up to the button here in the upper right-hand corner to view this browser. There are two tabs. There's the project browser, which is all the files in the project, but there's also the all files tab which allows us to dig into our Mac's hard drive and external hard drives to find any file that we want to use. Just by double clicking on my solid state drive here, I dive deeper into the contents of the drive and look, I have a folder called samples. So let's double click on that. All right, so I have several different audio loops and they're all at different tempos. And I want to preview some of these loops alongside my project to see if something there might be a good fit. So I'm going to solo just the drums and set the cycle range by pressing C. And all I have to do is hit play in the project to begin playback. And then I just have to click on the individual loops in the project browser to hear them preview alongside the project. Let's see how this works out. I'll use spacebar on my Mac's keyboard. Okay, so this is not working out well. None of these loops are playing back at the project tempo of 125 beats per minute. They're just playing at their native built-in tempo. And so how could I possibly figure out what might work for my project? Well, let's assume, okay, maybe I somehow have identified a loop that would work. Well, let me just drag it right into the project. I'll drag it right to the bottom section here below the last track, drag and drop. Right, so the loop lines up with the very beginning of the part, but it doesn't quite stretch the full eight bars. It doesn't even line up with four bars. So its timing is definitely not gonna line up again with the project. So let's check it out right now. I'll solo the loop and the drums. All right, so now we have to figure out how do we get this loop tighten up with the project? And there are many ways to go about this. I'll show you a quick way. If we go to show hide flex right up here, and then I'm going to set the flex mode to polyphonic. The view changes for our loop. And if you hover your mouse over a boundary of the region until you see your mouse turn into this icon, if you click, hold and drag, you can either reduce the length of this region or expand it using time compression and expansion. So now our loop sounds like this. Or if you want to speed it up, go half time. Now that's cool, but it's just not convenient. It's just not convenient to try to negotiate the tempo between something that doesn't relate at all to the project. Well, there is a better way and that's using untagged loops. So let me show you right now. We're gonna open the loop browser by pressing O on the Mac keyboard. 
Of course, you can go right up to the button here as well to show or hide the loop browser. And the loop browser shows you all of the Apple loops that you can download and use in Logic Pro, as well as any Apple loops that you've created. And super easy to create your own Apple loops. You can just click, hold, and drag any one of your regions into the loop browser. Once you drag and drop the region, you'll get this dialog that allows you to add the region to the Apple Loops library. There's a lot of opportunity to really customize and fine tune your loops and samples. You can name the looper sample. You can determine if it's a loop or a one shot, set the scale, the genre, as well as the key, as well as apply several descriptors for your loop so you can easily find it. Now, of course, we only see one shot, and that's because, again, the region itself doesn't line up exactly with the grid of our project. This is very grid dependent, so we could adjust the region boundary to better line up with the grid of the project, but you can see here that it doesn't quite line up. So I'm going to use the playhead using Command and T to split the region. From there, I'll drag the region back into the loops browser. And now look at that. We can determine whether this is a loop or a one shot. Of course, you probably want to preserve all of the audio of your loop and make sure it lines up in terms of timing. So again, you could use flex time to adjust the timing, or you could just figure out the tempo of your loop. Usually third-party loops will have the key and tempo right in the file name. So I know this file is at 82 beats per minute. So temporarily, let's just adjust the tempo of the project, right? Let's solo and take a listen alongside the metronome. All right, so that works. Drag it in. And now it'll have the correct tempo. I can assign the key and then let Logic know this is indeed a loop. All right, so that's cool, but obviously you probably don't wanna go through all your samples and loops and save them in such a manner. And then you're running the risk of saving all this stuff on your internal drive of your Mac. Now the untagged loops in Logic Pro really doesn't make itself apparent to you until you drag some files from outside the application into the loops browser. So from like the finder into the loop browser. So let's do that right now. I'm going to navigate to my max finder on that external drive. I have my folder called samples. Let's try dragging the entire selection right into the loop browser. Upon dragging and dropping, a dialog pops up that says, hey, do you want to add these loops as untag loops? If these audio files have a constant tempo, start on a downbeat and end on a beat, they will adapt to the project tempo when previewed or added to a project. This is perfect. This is what we want, at least at face value. So I'm going to go ahead and click on add to untag loops. All right. Now the loops browser has two different sections. There's obviously the Apple loop section, and then there's the untag loop section. And now we have a folder that's called user loops. If I double click on it, there's all the samples that I dragged in. And you can see these different columns with the name as well as the beats of the loop and the tempo. So Logic has analyzed the length and the tempo of these different loops. And now when we try to preview alongside our drums, check it out. Let me just set the tempo back to 125. And here we go. Right, so now we can preview our third-party loops at the same exact tempo as the project. And now there's no trying to translate between different tempos, trying to understand what might work. No, you can just listen in the untagged loop section of the loop browser. So perfect, right? We have exactly what we want. And from here, I can just drag right from the untagged loops into my project. And look at that. That loop has conformed to the project tempo automatically. So if we solo once again. But there is one thing to keep in mind here. Because I dragged all these loops individually into the loop browser, even though I selected all of them and dragged them in, if we go to the untag loop section and back it up, then if I right-click or hold control and click on the folder, 
and asked to show in the Finder, check it out. We're inside the Music folder on my Mac. Under Audio Music Apps, Untag Loops, User Loops, and if I just press Command and I to get info about this folder, all these files are saved onto my Mac's internal drive. See, there's the folder, and we can see that it's saved on the Mac's internal drive under my user account. Same thing for this sample. This Vocal 1C WAV file is also saved to the Mac's internal drive. So this is not really what we wanted. We wanted to be able to preview, yes, import, yes, at the same tempo, but we wanted to keep all this stuff on the external drive. So let's close these up. And let's, in fact, just right-click on the user loop folder here in the Finder and move it to the trash. If we go back to Logic, if I try to go back to the untag loop section, it disappears. It's no longer there. So instead of dragging all these files as a selection from my solid state drive here, instead, I'll drag the folder of files into the loop browser. Once again, when I drag and drop, Logic asks, hey, do you want to add these as untag loops? Yep, let's add to untag loops. Now, this is different. We don't see a folder for user loops. We see the samples folder. And if I select it, check it out. In the navigation here, we see samples as an alias. We'll dig into that in just a moment. If I double click, once again, let's preview. Right, it's at the perfect tempo. If I bring it in. Just like the first time I'm able to preview the loop at the correct tempo and even import it at the correct tempo. But check it out, let's back it up. Select the folder, right click and show in Finder. Now we're still looking at the music folder under audio music apps, on tag loops and the samples folder. But this samples folder is an alias. As it turns out, these files that this folder is referring to is not been duplicated and saved onto my Mac's internal drive. If I use Command and I to open that Get Info pane, you can see it right there in the Get Info pane. These files are saved in the samples folder on my separate external hard drive. It's not the Mac hard drive. This alias is just a shortcut that tells Logic, hey, when you try to retrieve these files, grab them from that separate solid state drive that's connected. And I really want to prove this to you. So let's quit Logic. I'm going to save and quit. Let's close some of these windows. And I'm just gonna click on the untag loops and I'm going to eject this solid state drive. All right, take a look inside the samples folder and there's nothing. The samples are gone, they've been ejected. And now if I open up Logic Pro and open a new project, if we open the loop browser, I no longer have the untag loop section. I can't access it because those files are gone. They're not connected to the Mac anymore. All this to say you can keep your third-party loops on your separate drives, preview them, and even import them at the correct tempo without taking up a bunch of space on your Mac's hard drive. So I hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, as always, please subscribe to YLogic Per Rules. Also, please be sure to check out the links in the description below. I always include links to download free templates, PDFs, guides, all this stuff is designed to help you in your experience with Logic Pro. Thanks so much, and I'll see you for more next week. Take care.